One that uh, is almost ended, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it was definitely a, a major research effort. It took the legacy of two previous projects, Interface and Coordinate. And in one net, uh, uh, there were several actors uh, jointly working to further our knowledge. We had TSOs, we had DSOs, we had uh, um, companies, uh, software companies, we have research centers. And the idea was really to develop uh, uh, solutions that could uh, create or support the creation of a single electricity system at the European level. Jan, with your team, you uh, coordinated the, the Northern Cluster. And the idea there was to really uh, test uh, a cross-border market for uh, ancillary services. I would like then to ask you, what did you learn during this uh, incredible experience, uh, uh, for instance, in terms of market design, in terms of uh, data exchange and customer engagement? Please. Thank you very much. Um, I'd say that we learned quite a bit. We learned that we have to collaborate uh, and we have to understand the market design in depth. Um, I think we learned that the current data exchange is not enough to actually support these kinds of markets. We need to evolve beyond. Mm -hmm. And in customer engagement, we can get the buy-in, but we need to facilitate. Mm. I see. So if I look at the market design, uh, it's really important to look at the different kinds of products. So we have different products for different levels of flexibility, and they serve different purposes. So you can have capacity, you can have energy, you can have power, uh, you can have different kinds of things that you're trading with, and the timescales are different. And that means then that the actual product content and the information that you require in the data exchange, that becomes different. So that's why the key components of the flexibility register, along with the TSO-DSO coordination platform, are really, really key to actually enabling all of this. And these are the things that we were able to take deeper and widen across more networks than what we did when we identified that there might be something called a flexibility register when we worked in interface. Um, so when I then look at the customer engagement part, um, the customer engagement part that we did, we, we ran a survey across uh, multiple countries and we got loads of responses. People really want to engage, they really want to be part of all of this, but they don't necessarily understand. Mm. And we really need to facilitate that understanding and then we need to facilitate the actual actions of flexibility. So service prov provision, uh, information exchange, uh, device connection and market connection, these kinds of things. So that needs to be there and that comes through service provision. And when you have the shared platforms of the flexibility register and the TSO DSO coordination platform, you can enable this very well because you lower the barrier of entry for everyone. So you get more, uh, more people in. And the data exchange, um, indeed, when the national data exchange uses a certain granularity, uh, and you have certain information available, it's not really uh, very necessary to have all the little details of the flexibility for all the ancillary services from everyone. You need them from the ones who will participate. And that also leads to a fair cost distribution of what needs to be developed in the actual production environments so that you have a good solution. So that's also something that we learned, that we can actually do this without creating undue cost and also creating an efficiently evolving environment where all the stakeholders really actually uh, want to collaborate. Thank you, but actually your last comment uh, then lead to my uh, other question because there was this experience, many partners, uh, what would you recommend to TSO and DSO? They, they are of course essential to the creation of, this, of um, these new markets for ancillary services, they had to cooperate uh, in this research project. What could you suggest them? I think the one word answer really is open. And it means that you need to open up to each other and you need to speak the common language because indeed in TSO and DSO, the SO is common. You are system operators and it is one system. 
It just happens to have administrative barriers. So when you look at it from a deeper point of view, you start to understand that the division that's created by regulation and by the design of what we have as a common market, it's, it's of course needed because yes, the, diff the difficulties are different on the kind of national or, or market area level than what they are on the uh, first level where you have to deal with the voltage, you have to deal with the actual lines, you have to deal with the end customers, and you have to deal with the retail enabled, all of those important tasks that the DSO has. And when you open your mind to those challenges, and then you open your mind uh, also as a DSO to the TSO challenges of how does all of this work together? How do we maintain frequency? How do we maintain a stable network on the whole? And how do we enable connectivity of large wind parks? Uh, what do we do when we have energy, energy flows cross border? These kinds of things. Then you start to understand, oh, my low voltage connected solar has an impact. My high voltage connected wind park has an impact. And if we don't work together, that impact may be basically hindering the efficient operation of the energy system. So what I'd recommend for the TSOs and DSOs is really to sit down and look at this from a fresh point of view. What would you do if you were to actually look at the energy system today and build the structure of the energy market, taking into account the new distributed renewable energy assets that are coming online with their flexibility issues. So you don't have the kind of easy, stable system of the centralized energy production that we were used to in the last decades. And I think we managed to do some of that in the northern cluster because we were able to test in real environments, real customers, real flexibilities, and also then see the results on DSO level and TSO level. And then maybe the magic potion becomes complete when you involve all the stakeholders. So during the three years, we involved all the stakeholders in regular stakeholder meetings. The first ones were like, well, what's happening? And the latest ones were, hey, can I come too? So it really makes sense to involve the stakeholders because now we're taking the next step in putting up the first TSO-DSO coordinated flexibility market from the Finnish basis, and we are now understanding what that means. Mm. We wouldn't have understood without the OneNet project and also the base work that we did in Interface. So it is about collaboration, and I think that that's something that we've started, and I think we can continue on that track very well, thanks to OneNet. Thank you very much. So if I can summarize, uh, Jan, it's the energy transition calls for new lenses, not the one of 30 years ago when there was a clear distinction between transmission and distribution, and when electricity was mostly a matter for electrical engineer alone working in these national companies. Now, things, uh, boundaries are blurred, and we need uh, all the users of the energy system to be part of the development process of the evolution of the system itself. Thank you very much, Jan, and uh, good you. travel back home. Thank you.